In this video, I'm going to show you a full behind the scenes of a wedding day from prep to reception. This will be part one and there will be three more parts to follow. It will be a POV walkthrough of the day. It will be a review of the Tamron 24 to 70 lens, showing you why I think it's the best lens for wedding photography and videography. And the third and final aspect of the video will be tips for shooting a wedding day, different things I've learned through experience and not necessarily things that I found on YouTube. These will be things like how to be respectful to guests when shooting in their homes, at the ceremony and so on. If this is of interest to you, subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you're notified when part two, three and four come out. There will be so many more videos like this where I take you behind the scenes on my brand shoots, business shoots, influencer shoots and things like that. So as you've just seen, I photographed the wedding dress. Obviously that's an important detail shot to get at the beginning of the day. This is a dress that most brides will only wear once in their life. Can you imagine shooting a wedding day and not having detailed beautiful shots of a wedding dress before it's potentially messed up and it's gonna be dragged around on the floor all day long, potentially drinks spilled on it and things like that. So make sure you get detailed shots of the wedding dress before they put it on at the start of the day. Here is the first tip of the video. As you go through the home, make sure you greet everyone that you see. Don't wait for people to greet you. Many people can be nervous as there's a strange person in their home. So take initiative, introduce yourself. The last thing you want is a family member not liking you. Now you should be nice to people anyway, but these people will come in handy. For example, when you need to find someone on the dance floor, these will be the people that help you out. When you need to find the bride, it will be the sister that knows where they are. You need to find where the car has been parked or something like that. There will be somebody else that will help you with these things. So it's best to just introduce yourself to people, especially when you're in their home. It's just a respectful thing to do. Now, as you see it happening here, the bride's mother is clearing the table so that I can make the shots of the rings. Obviously, you don't want cluttered backgrounds in your images unless you're using them for some kind of creative reason, you know, foreground, background. But that's not the idea I had as the reds of those juices, the oranges in the fruit, etc. I feel would clash with the colors of the rings and the flowers that I wanted to shoot. Here's another tip, get multiple angles. You should be doing this anyway with almost anything you shoot ever, but it's just a helpful reminder to get multiple angles so that you have more to choose from when you're editing. And ultimately, so that the bride and groom have more to choose from when you send them their photos. Here I'm using the manual focus, and I find that when you rely on the autofocus, when it gets to close shots like this, you're leaving it to the camera and I don't think that's a wise thing to do, especially if you're low on time. The last thing you wanna be doing is using the autofocus and having to keep checking each image and zoom in and pixel peep when you can just pixel peep as you shoot. So the way I do this is I use the magnifying glass on the LCD screen. Um, it'll be different for every camera, but Canon, you have the magnifying glass button and you have the symbol on the touch LCD screen. Depending on the Canon model, it will be in different places and it may or may not be on a touch screen. So I use the magnifying glass to zoom in 
and then use the manual focus ring on the Tamron 24 to 70 to adjust the focus on the specific part of the ring that I want to capture. It's a great thing to have the full range of 24 to 70 on this lens because I can zoom in to get 70 to get a bit of compression on the background of the image as shooting this wide I don't think would have looked very good. And as the day progresses and you see part two, three and four of this video, you'll see more and more why range in a lens is so important as opposed to having three or four prime lenses that you have to keep taking in and out of your bag throughout the day. The 24 to 70 I think is a perfect lens for weddings because you can be shooting these rings at 70 millimeters and then the bridal party comes down and they're having this funny moment. You wanna be able to go straight to 24 so that you can capture everyone in the room at once without having to stand in a room with like five people all staring at you in silence. As you take a lens off your camera, put the lens cap on it, put it in the bag, then find another lens, take off the lens cap, put it on the camera, readjust your settings and then take the shot. At that point, the moment is gone. And if you've shot weddings before or you're planning to shoot weddings before, you need to know you can't miss moments on the wedding day. These moments cannot be replicated. You must capture them in their natural form. As you can see here, I'm adjusting the box and I'm using it in the foreground. So I'm not saying make sure you have the complete empty background in all your detailed shots. I'm saying use your creative license and adjust foreground and background as you see fit. It's good that this f2.8 is a shallow depth of field, so it allows for the bokeh in the foreground. Thanks for watching, that was part one. Subscribe for part two, three and four and turn on the notification bell so that you are notified when part two is released. As I said, this channel will be content of this kind. There will be a lot more videos like this. I will take you behind the scenes on brand shoots, business shoots, influencer shoots, shooting ad campaigns and things like that. And me giving you tips and tricks that I've learned as a result of many mistakes I've made in the past. I plan to give you loads of value and if you enjoyed this video and learnt anything from this video, you will definitely learn a lot more if you subscribe to the channel.